Okay. So I've got myself a little circuit again. Nice little circuit. Example. That's a good heading. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to put one load into this circuit with my battery. And again, maybe this is something that you remember from grade nine. But when I'm trying to measure voltage, you know, we've talked about an ammeter. Let's talk about volt voltage measurement for a minute. What's the name of the device that measures voltage? Voltmeter. Voltmeter. Okay. So when we're measuring voltage, we may talk about using a voltmeter. And does a voltmeter get connected in series or in parallel? Parallel. Parallel. Thank you. So that means that we're going to connect it across any either power supply or load that we would like to find the potential difference for, or the voltage. Potential difference and voltage are synonymous terms. So when I say measure the potential difference, measure the voltage, I'm saying the same thing. Yeah? Oh, it says voltage. OK. So, or we could say potential difference. Potato, potato. Potential difference. Now, you guys have probably bought batteries before from the store. Let's say that you buy yourself a AA battery. And if these two cells were AA batteries, what's the voltage on a AA battery? Do you remember? Those are the cylinder, long cylindrical ones. Don't know? Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> what are the kids doing these days? Everybody's got an iPod. Nobody's got AA batteries anymore. All right, a AA battery, 1.5 volts. 120, that's the, that's the voltage on a wall socket, but it's AC anyway. All right, so we've got a, we've got a voltage for each cell of 1.5 volts. If I connect a voltmeter across these two cells, and are these cells connected in series or in parallel with one another? Yeah, they're one after another. We could say they're connected in series. But if I put two cells in series with one another, what would be the voltage across both cells together, like the way I've connected it. Yeah, three volts. You put, if you put cells in series, the voltage is additive. And we're going to talk later on. I keep on saying things are going to happen later on, but we have to build a foundation first. So this is grade nine stuff, and I hope that you remember that from grade nine. When you put cells in series, their voltage is additive. They they work together to increase the voltage. Okay. And likewise, if I were to put a voltmeter across the load for this nice simple circuit, what voltage would you expect to find? Three volts, yeah. I'm so glad. Uh, 3.0 volts. I didn't do my sig fix properly over here in green. But 3.0 volts, because the amount of energy that you would give to these charges would have to be dissipated by the load as they travel through the circuit. And people like to use analogies for these sorts of things. They say, oh, OK, so a circuit like this is kind of like a water pump. And, they s and you say, huh? How is it like a water pump? Well, did you guys see water analogies in grade 9? Hard to remember. I don't remember what analogies teachers may or may not have shown you. But let's say that we have a water pump. And a water pump, as we all know, is capable of pumping water up to a certain height. And once that water gets up to a certain height, you know, you see so around the neighborhoods, you see some of these people that have lovely gardens with little water uh, features or whatever in the gardens. Maybe you go to a golf course. It's, it's always so pretty to look at. Basically, the water pump is lifting the water up to one height. The water flows along some picturesque little stream. And then, of course, it gets over the edge of a precipice, the edge of a ledge, and it comes down. Splashes down at the bottom. Maybe put some little some little uh, fishies down there, and the water flows back to the pump and repeats the process. So we're not wasting water. Maybe some of it evaporates, but you know it's all very lovely. Anyways, the analogy goes like this: When you have the pump operating, for every particle of water, you know, water is a, is made up of molecules of water, H2O. Every molecule of water gets raised up, and each molecule receives we could say a certain amount, let's just make this an up arrow actually, a certain amount of what type of energy as it gets raised up? Beautiful. So let's say that we increase its gravitational potential energy. 
Yeah, gravitational potential energy. Each molecule gets its own gravitational potential energy as it gets higher. And it sort of floats along. And as it comes down, what does it lose? It loses gravitational potential energy. OK? So it loses gravitational potential energy. Now, the analogy goes like this. When I send current out of a cell, I have raised its electrical potential energy. And when it comes down through a load, what's it losing? Electrical potential energy. You got it. And when it loses the electrical potential energy, have I destroyed an electron? What have I relieved it of again? Say it again. What did I relieve the electron of? Yeah, I relieved it of electrical potential energy. And who gets the electrical potential energy? The light bulb in this case. So maybe it's not a perfect analogy. But you can see that this guy raises energy just like this guy raises its, its uh, possession of energy. Gives it more energy. So it possesses that energy. And as it goes through a load, it gives away those, that, that possession. Its energy is the possession that it has. And it gives that energy away, and it doesn't get destroyed. It gets imparted to the load that takes the energy. And of course, the load, in this case a light bulb, would use that energy for what purpose? Light. Yeah, light, maybe some heat, depending on how good a light bulb it is. Okay? So the energy doesn't get created or destroyed. The charges don't get created or destroyed. The charges just move around from one terminal to another per terminal. And the energy gets imparted to the load. Everything gets conserved. It's all a nice little, little ecosystem of electricity. Okay. Now that's if there's one load. What if I say that there's two loads? It couldn't be. What if there's two loads? That's impossible. Oh, I lied. Three loads. Let's make it be three loads. Why not? I've got three loads here. How is having three loads similar to having the same water pump? You know, maybe you go to a fancier golf course the next week. Go play golf. You want to, you really go to watch the water features. You don't go for the game. Okay. You got a, I like golf. I'm just joking. And you got this fancy water feature where there's a little waterfall and then it flattens off. And then there's another little, little waterfall. And it flattens off. And then there's another little waterfall. You know, people always love these ones. They always look more exciting. And then the water goes back to the pump and repeats the process. What could you tell me about the amount of gravitational potential energy that the pump provides and how that relates to the amount of gravitational potential energy that's given back at each waterfall? Yeah? So it would be the same? What, what would be the same? Total of all three of the waterfalls. Yeah, you got it. So the, the drop in gravitational potential energy here plus the drop in gravitational potential energy here, plus the drop in gravitational potential energy here, would be equal, if you add them all together, add them all up, to the amount of gravitational potential energy that the pump gave the water molecules. So if I want to complete that analogy over to my circuit, now I've obviously tried to make my circuit look kind of like the waterfalls, you know, that kind of look like they are the same shape here. but if I say that at this point here, I'm going to raise up the voltage, the amount of energy per charge that each electron has, what would have to be true if I were to measure the voltage across each of these light bulbs? What must be true about the voltage? Yep. Yeah, if you add them all up, They'd equal the total one, just like the waterfalls, okay? Nice little comparison. And we'll, we'll travel more down that pathway as we get further on.